Good evening, everyone. It's about 10 p.m. And I wanted to share with you a very, very important uh, set of events that's taking place um, relating to the Canadian government and the people of Alaska, the working people of Alaska. So we'll wait for people to join. I just finished a video talking about how politicians who I call prostitutes and the prostitution rackets that they run, which are the state houses and the city halls, et cetera, that how we need to move the, the discourse or the attention on those people and to go to the real heart of the enemy, which is big pharma. Um, but it is the multi-trillion dollar large corporations like big pharma, which actually fund governments, fund politicians to execute policy. So that's really the head of the snake. And what's unfortunate is that for far too long, movements always target people to go beg to these politicians. By the time you talk to a politician, they're already bought and paid for, okay? So it's almost stupid because you don't understand the system's nature of things. We have to go to understand we have to cut off the head of the snake, which is really the, 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 uh, the, the monetary structure which fuels policymaking. So frankly, politicians are way at the end of this process, okay? And if anyone has illusions that a politician is going to do anything for you or getting a person elected is this individual is going to do something for you is out of their mind. However, it is movements that make the difference. And that's what we train people in our Truth, Freedom and Health Institute. We've created an institute where we teach people the science of systems. We've created an entire Truth, Freedom and Health community where people independent of big tech can commune in, in, in a um in, through private social media, and then we're creating activists on the ground. And that's the movement that's going to win us truth, freedom, and health. But what I wanted to talk about today, uh, one of our truth, freedom, and health warrior scholars, activists up in Canada, a woman, Elaine Head. And I was trying to get a hold of Elaine, but she is a working person. She works for a living. She's a uh, health uh, practitioner. Uh, she helps people with all sorts of different ailments. But um, Elaine was sharing with us at last night at one of our truth, freedom, and health meetings that the Canadian government um, on today, today, and I think they've extended it to January 22nd, is planning on ensure, making sure that any, listen to this carefully, any US truck driver, any foreign truck driver that has to drive through Alaska, drive through Canada to get to Alaska, or anyone who crosses a border to Alaska even if they're not even stopping in a in in a, sorry crossing the border in Canada to go uh, let's say to Alaska and come back must be jabbed okay this is very very interesting um, and so there's another news story that came out said that they were going to do the same with Canadian drivers so if a Canadian drive truck driver went into the United States and then came back and he was unvaccinated he would have to be jabbed but literally in the last 24 hours. The Canadian government reversed that for Canadian truck drivers, but not for U.S. truck drivers. So just to give a little bit of a simple geography lesson, I think this is important because some people, the school system don't even educate people where Alaska is. So let's just, uh, to those people that are new, this is the United States down here. There's Greenland over here, right? But here's Alaska, right? So the Alaska is directly not connected to the continental United States. It's actually sort of hanging off over here, and there's a huge reason, a history for this, but it really hangs off Canada, okay? So Alaska requires supplies, let's say, from the United States. Well, in order to get supplies from here all the way up here, truck drivers here have to cut through Alaska, uh, cut through Canada to get to Alaska. So all the businesses here that are delivering, let's say, from California fruits and vegetables that go up through Canada to get to Alaska, all these truck drivers are going to have to be jabbed. Or it's only Canadian truck drivers which can go in here and come back. So one could argue that this is a goal for Canada, to the Canadian government. Maybe they've been paid off by local corporations here to have control of goods and services here. So they can have a monopoly of the supply chain here. Um, or it is to really destroy the small business truck drivers. And let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, many years ago, you know, we um, when I was running for Senate, we were in 
Canada, I mean, we were in, at the White House uh, uh, outside and we noticed that there were all these truckers out there protesting. Well, in the United States, the trucking industry is really divided into two parts. The big trucking companies, which hire, you know, truckers to drive, which uh, what I understand is the big trucking companies actually have it like a, a mill, okay? They take people off the street, put them to the truck driver's training school, and then put them into these big trucking companies. And most of those truck drivers are part of what's called the Teamsters, one of the big unions. And the Teamsters is essentially, you know, a top-down union, um, and they're basically in collusion with the big corporations. However, that's only 15% of the truckers. This is what I learned that night when I was down there. The other 85% of truckers in the United States are small businesses, you know, a mom and pop store, or sorry, mom and pop business where they own a couple of trucks and the uh, uh, husband will drive, you know, long distances. Sometimes it could be the wife, right? And they make their money. So 85% of the goods in the United States or the 85% of the truck trucking uh, truckers in the United States are actually small businesses. And these small business truckers have been imposed more and more regulations with the collusions of the trucking companies with the government. And the goal is to really put these small business truckers out of business. And one of the things that I learned from these truckers is that so for the large companies, they have negotiated deals with the government there because, you know, they do long trucking drives that when a trucker travels from point A to point B, they have to have, I think, two truckers in the cab. And there's some rules on how much sleep they each have to get, quote unquote, safety rules. And they have put systems in these trucks that actually track the truckers. Now, a large company can hire lots of truckers and rotate. But if you're a small company, you know, if you have two or three truckers, you, you don't have the access to fleets of truckers. So in many ways, that regulation was really done to destroy a lot of the small business truck owners. So you can imagine the Canadian government now is basically mandating and I'll show you the news release if you don't, um, if you haven't uh, watched this, is that this just came out, for example, in the, um, uh, this came out in the uh, Wall Street Journal. Um, let me bring it up. Here's the Wall Street Journal. And, um, and you can see right here, truckers fret over pending COVID vaccine rules at US-Canada border. Um, we had heard it was the 15th, but apparently it's gonna be on the, uh, on the 22nd said on Saturday, Canada will require American and other foreign truckers to be fully vaccinated to enter with similar U.S. rules coming out. And the article really talks about the fact that the two countries have allowed trade to cross their border unimpeded since the start of the pandemic. OK, but however, this is changing. The Canadian's rule, rules kick in on Saturday when Canada will ban U.S. and other foreign truckers from entering the country unless they're fully vaccinated. Canada will require unvaccinated Canadian drivers to show a negative molecular COVID-19 test taken 72 hours prior to reaching the border before they're allowed entry. So this article came out January 13th. However, an update on this just recently came out um, earlier today, and I wanna bring that up, so we wanna keep you up to date on this. And if you see here, the update basically says the following. And this update came, uh, was a, a release that was put out on Reuters, and that, um, uh, it will tell you that what's happened here is something a little more interesting that Reuters essentially says that, I think it's the right one. Yeah, I'm sorry, here it is. Um, Reuters says that Canada drops vaccine mandates for its truckers under pressure from industry. And this was just 24 hours ago, okay? And what it says, the US truckers coming in will have to be vaccinated, but Canadian truckers, it says Canadian Prime Minister uh, uh, Trudeau had faced pressure from main uh, opposition party and trucking lobby to drop the vaccine mandate for truckers due to uh, Canadian truckers due to uh, due to come into force on Saturday. The Canadian Border Service CBSA said the unvaccinated or partially un partially vaccinated trucking truck drivers arriving at the U.S. Canadian border will remain exempt from pre arrival. Right. Um, however, truckers from the United States will still need to be vaccinated as they are turned back at the border. Uh, uh, as it will be turned back at the border from January 15th. However, the uh, Wall Street Journal article shows that this was extended to January 22nd, okay? So that's what's going on in Canada. 
And the result of this is not insignificant. Um, the last, uh, the reality on the ground in Canada, and I want to bring this up, that'll share share with you what the what the debacle this is causing the people in Canada is the following. Um, so it, it, you can see right here, bare shelves concerns Alaskans from Ketchikan to Fairbanks. And the reality is that, that uh, in Canada, the people only have food, just to, just to be clear, on the shelves uh, for three days, okay? So let me show you right here. Um, Alaska is at the end of the supply chain. Those in the trucking field say that Alaska, for example, only has a three-day supply of food on hand at any given time. And while food supply issues have always plagued rural Alaska with delayed shipments and sometimes stale provisions, those on the rail belt and in Southeast haven't seen it like this since 1960, right? So here you go, right? So we need to understand everything, right? What is it? What is it? Okay, so uh, I, I want to, let's see if we can get Elaine on here. Uh, let me bring in Elaine Haddon, um, because let me go back to see if we can get, Elaine Haddon is one of our Truth, Freedom, and Health wonderful uh, uh, people out in uh, Alaska. So let me see if I can bring Elaine in. Maybe we can. Um, I can't, I can't get Elaine, but maybe you can tell her to call me directly, okay? But and essentially, this is a serious crisis, so... Alaska, people in Alaska only have a three-day food supply because remember, they're way up there, uh, way at the end of that supply chain. And you can see again from this map here, um, and anyone can obviously look at a map, right? But I think visually you can see where Alaska is, okay? So Alaska is way at the end of, of the supply chain, three-day food supply. So just think about how devastating this kind of policy is going to be to the working people of Alaska. So I wanted to alert people on here because this is something very personal and dear to us because our Truth for the Health movement, we have people, by the way, in Antarctica. We have a warrior scholar sign in Antarctica. So our movement has literally spread all over the world. And we, we just had a major discussion on this Thursday. And Elaine is really, really concerned about what to do. Okay. So we want to ask you guys, what do you think should be done? So if the U.S. truck drivers can't have to get vaccinated, and many of them don't want to do that, that means they can't deliver their goods. First of all, it's going to devastate their business. It's going to devastate the supply chain. And you're going to depend on only Canadian truckers to get food over to Alaska. Okay. And I don't think that's going to cut it. So it'd be interesting to hear your guys' thoughts. Um, but again, we're having a discussion here today to educate everyone on the latest news that the Canadian government, which is a big, big partner with Big Pharma, big, big partner with big medicine. And that partnership is essentially um, uh, driving policy, which says er in every U.S. trucker who wants to drive up through Canada to deliver anything to Alaska, part of the United States, must be jabbed. So think about what that's going to cause. Um, Canadian truck drivers, for their own truck drivers, because of the massive movement in Canada and the pressure they sort of backed off on the Canadian driver mandate at the borders. But for U.S. drive, Excuse what's me, that? Dr. Shiva, we have several people commenting that they uh, that they went back on that for the Canadian truck drivers. Which means they went back the other way? Yeah, so they're enforcing it for the Canadian truck drivers as well. Now. Okay, so now, now they're enforcing it. So, and I think what's, so uh, if that's the truth, great. Thank you for the update, Ryan. So I think the bottom line, what's going on is the establishment is watching what will working people do on the ground? What kind of movement will be will we build? And I'm telling you, it's very, very difficult to organize these massive demonstrations just for theater, which is what the not so obvious establishment is doing. We need to make sure that in our local communities and in our local areas, we start understanding the physics of what's going on. And the reason we're in this condition is because we keep outsourcing our future to lobbyists, to unions, uh, top down unions, and to the government and politicians. These are not the force order celebrities and to you know the Trumps and the Robert F. Kennedys and all these fools. These people are not gonna change the world. Let me repeat that again. Government, politicians, lobbyists, celebrities, 
the not so obvious establishment is not going to change the world. That's where we're in this condition. It is only going to be a true bottoms up movement of working people globally. The Canadian truckers, if you're listening, you should be in solidarity with your American truckers. And that is how the world is going to change when working people realize we have the same enemy. The same enemy. There, there was no reason that white working class kids should have gone 10,000 miles to go fight, you know, yellow working class people in Vietnam. OK, there was no reason that white working class and black working class Americans should have gone all over to fight an imperialist war in Afghanistan so we could make sure that minerals were preserved for the elites. And it is time that working people unite. That's what what's at heart here. So the Canadian work, the Canadian truck drivers, the Canadian working people must look across the border and see it's not Canadian. It's not U.S. When it comes to working people, we have the same enemy. Both the big pharma is a real enemy. Big pharma is a global titan. They're the globalists. And what they're doing right now is profiting at $65,000 per minute. Think about that. They want to they want to starve Alaska. They want to starve the hardworking people of Alaska. But Big Pharma is making $1,000 per second. That means by the time this, if we do this for an hour, $1,000 a second would mean in 3,600 seconds, which is one hour, um, Big Pharma will make $3.6 million in one hour. Is that right? Yeah. $3.6 million. My math is right. Okay. Yes. $3.6 million. Okay. That's the kind of money they're making. Okay. And we're going and begging to governments and et cetera. The only way out of this is for working people to unite. And in order for working people to unite, they need to break from the establishment of the not so obvious establishment. And people need to have some training on how to build a movement. So that is what we're doing a truth, freedom and health. So, and we get together, we talk about how to win, okay? We're scaring the hell out of the politicians in Massachusetts because we're breaking the movement from begging to them and going to the real enemy, which is big pharma. And they just threw a bone to us here in Massachusetts to try to quiet down the movement to extend the vaccine mandates on government workers, but it's not gonna work. We need to escalate the movement. Working people need to unite. You got any other comments, John, uh, of ideas people have to help uh, there? James doesn't seem to think it's a very important story and he's assuming our audience is only Americans. Yeah, so James Shaver, there's a better uh, information to give to Americans. So James, you have to understand, you can look at our audience. There are people from all over the world. Our movement now has people in every country. We have leaders in Nigeria. We have leaders in France. We have leaders in Australia. We have leaders in um, you know, Japan. We have leaders all over the world. So this is a movement that cuts across all you know countries. It is a movement with a singular thing. Uh, and the slogan is beyond left and right, right, truth, freedom and health, working people unite. As a Canadian, Cynthia Cools Lartigue, um, Cynthia, great to have you, says, I'm disgusted with my government and many fellow Canadians who believe in all of compliance to the, to the man mandates. We have provinces that will tax the unvax, and now even Costco and Walmart is considering banning the unvax from shopping in their stores. So, yeah. So, listen, Cynthia, I grew up in a country which had what was called the untouchables, okay, which is what we were considered, right? The people that were dirty people, right? Um, a caste system in India, and we're creating that caste system here. And it's really not about unvaccinated and vaccinated. It's about the people who have a difference of opinion on truth, right? Whether we want real science or fake science and whether we want to be monitored and, and uh, you know, our, our entire life being controlled and, and essentially censorship dominates and whether we really want to look at all different kinds of ways to manage our health. Truth, freedom and health is what's being denied. But I, what's fascinating is the real fundamental issue, Cynthia, some of the people who are working people, my the research that we've done says only 30 percent of the people out there are just the dumb idiots who just think that one size fits all medicine is a way to go. 20% are getting it, but the remaining 50% out there are fence sitters. And many of those people, if they're working people, we know some people who is a single mother, three kids. She said, I had to get jabbed, otherwise I was gonna be homeless. 
So essentially what they're doing to working people is essentially making them slaves. So this is fundamentally, you have to make a choice between putting food on your table or whether you're going to um, uh, go against your own instincts or your own health decisions about your own body. So that's what this is about. But more importantly, it goes against science. And what we need to do to build our movement, we need to win over that 50%. And to win over that 50%, it's not going to come from pro-vax or anti-vax. It's going to come from educating those 50% that you're being made a slave, economic slave. Yes, some of these people took the vaccine because they had to, to maybe put food on the table. But we need to win those people over to talk about the larger issue beyond left and right of what's fundamentally going on. So that's what I encourage people to do. I encourage people um, to join our movement because we're creating ways that we can bridge this gap. We're not gonna win by just barking at the 30%, the vocal minority. We have to win over the 50% and we have to strengthen the 20% of working people that are out there. And that's how we're gonna win. You got another one, John? Yep. Yeah. It's definitely another att attempt to destroy the independent truckers. Yeah, Justin, you nailed it because 85% of the truckers in the United States are independent truckers, independent. I didn't know this until about three years ago. As I mentioned, it was when I was at this rally in front of the White House where all these truckers were there and they were saying how the big trucking companies, the big trucking unions, the big trucking lobbyists all work together to squeeze out the 85%. So we have to really start looking at the economics of this. Do not get into the theater of the pro-vax, anti-vax. That's just one layer. When you peel away that layer, you see what the real issue is. Big pharma is making $65,000 per minute. And those monies go into big politicians. And I bet you, you can look at where Justin Trudeau gets his money, right? You have Trump in the United States. He got a million bucks just for his inauguration for, from Pfizer, okay? And where, you know, the Bidens get their money, all of these guys. In fact, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said he's pro-vaccine and he emphatically wants pro-vaccine. He endorsed Hillary Clinton three times. And a lot of people think this fool is their leader. He's not. He's a charlatan. And that's why we're in this situation. We're in this situation not because of the obvious establishment, but because of the collusion of the not-so-obvious establishment with Big Pharma. And that's what we need to understand. It's a hard pill to swallow, but that is the reality. I live in Alaska and this is happening. Yes. Um, Summer Wells, if you want to call me at 617-631-6874, let me put up my number. If we have people in Alaska, 617-631-6874. Summer, you can call me and maybe you can tell us what's going on there, but we'd love to hear from you. But we are in solidarity with the people in Alaska, but we want to let people know that the Canadian truckers and the American truckers, the independent truckers need to unite. And the Canadian truckers need to be in solidarity. They should say, we're not going to move goods if you do this to our brothers and sister truckers in, in, um, in the United States. That's how we stop this. So my appeal is to the working truckers in Canada to unite with your trucker uh, brethren in the United States. Because the Canadian government... The Canadian unions, the Canadian lobbies are going to are, are selling you out right now. I guarantee you right now they're backroom discussions, but the Canadian trucking lobbyists, the Canadian union, big unions with the with the U.S. Teamsters and with the U.S. Uh, trucking lobbies to squeeze out the independent truckers in Canada and squeeze out the independent truckers in the United States. That's what this is about. Because big trucking wants to eliminate competition. What better way to do that than right now? Destroy all the small truckers. Because if you're a small trucking tr and you're not willing to get jabbed and you're not willing to move, you're going to be out of business. Right? So imagine you're a small trucking family and you're in Oregon and you move goods from Oregon to Alaska and you don't want to get jabbed. Your whole business is destroyed or your business is going to move to a big trucking company. Okay? So I'm telling people start following the money. OK, and it's against working people. Get another one, John. Uh, there's a huge truck process starting uh, on the 22nd in Canada. They are going to convey in Ottawa from all parts of the country attention. That's great. I think it's really, really important. In addition to huge protests, David, that people do local protests, because sometimes these huge protests are controlled top down and they're just done as theater. So people do a negotiated deal to sell out the truckers. That's my 
one uh, warning to people. It's better, um, and also an insurance policy if there's not just in one location, but all over. I was ashamed. Henry, uh, Harry Kane says, I was ashamed of our government long before this came along. We must all unite as one. Our people will take care of you. Our government does not represent us either. Our truckers are true warriors of freedom. Connect with them directly. No line checkpoint uh, or weather will stop them. Bless you, Dr. Shiva. Truth, freedom, and health will triumph. Keep up the fight. We are with you. So Harry Kane's, please join. Go to truthfreedomhealth.com. Uh, we have a whole group in Canada that is uniting um, together. We have we train people, we educate people, but we have to get people beyond this left, right. We have to educate people to be very, very wary of these top-down movements, okay? So while I like a lot of people showing up, I can tell you that there's a big games going on in the back, back end, and it's really against independent trucking uh, truckers in, in um, Canada as well as the United States. Canada is dominion of UK. Is Brit crowned behind this? Definitely, Krishna. The British are right now, as I talked about, ultimately everything goes back to the British royalty. Canada and Australia are literally you know, completely controlled by Britain. There's so much, when I say Britain, not the people of Britain, but there's so much capital that the British elites have acquired post-Brexit in all their bank accounts, right? Particularly the Cayman Islands bank accounts. And the essence of this is fundamentally to use all that capital to cause lots of division, destroy working people globally, and essentially come in and use their assets and to buy large amounts of resources all over the world. The Brits have essentially out the British government and the British elites have outsourced their empire building to China in Asia Pacific, in Canada, obviously to the Trudeaus, and here in the United States to the elites of the United States. But the American Revolution going back to 1776 was when working people united and they earned themselves the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. And ever since then, the elites have wanted to take back, take that back. This entire set of events that we're seeing has nothing to do with health. It has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with freedom. It's really about enslaving people. And the only way out is working people uniting with the right political theory. It's not about just uniting all sorts of, you know, bullshitters. It's about working people uniting bottoms up. It's a fundamental difference. What I don't understand is why in the world they are so obsessed with money. Monica Martinez says they have enough. If it doesn't make any sense, what do they need all this money for? Monica, you're asking a very fundamental question. You have to understand it's not everyone. The people we're talking about really in some ways have some probably some serious, serious mental problems. Okay. Because they're controlled by power, profit and control in the last 12 to 18 months. 0.0001% of 0.001% of people have increased their wealth, double their wealth. 600 billionaires double their wealth by $2.3 trillion. They control now 11% of the GDP of the world. All right. This is not discussed in any of the media shows because all the media companies left and right are all owned by them. They all party together. They're all entertainers, guys. You know, it was really sort you know, uh, you know, be it Alex Jones, be it Tucker Carlson, be it all these guys are all one. They're entertainers. They're not building movements. The Truth, Freedom, Health movement is the only one through our very humble resources, through our channels, through our own resources. We do these videos. We've built our own institute to start educating people and we're building the community that's necessary. And our goal is to tell and educate and inspire and catalyze people to go on the ground with the right political theory, with communities. It's the only way out. Otherwise, we, we are heading to total slavery. And the only way the slaves win is when working people unite, but we have to get the right political theory. We got to stop following misleaders. Speaking of which. <laughs> Did you just say Robert Kennedy's a fraud? Yeah, no, that's not true. Robert Kennedy is the biggest fraud. John, let's bring up the video, okay? Right. So, um, let me do it. So look, um, many of you know, John, you want to, uh, yes. Uh, so Robert Kennedy is, and this is why Kanos, uh, you must go through the truth, freedom and health educational program. 
Um, let me tell you why, because what you will learn fundamentally, hey, John, it's okay, I can do it. Just take this comment away. But I'm glad we're bringing this up because I've been involved in the health movement for 30, 40 years. When I got into the, um, uh, yeah, so when I got in, I, I want everyone to actually, uh, John, can you, do you have this uh, JPEG? Um, so I'll bring this up right here and you can read it right here, okay? So um, here is a reality, okay? The not so obvious establishment is the establishment creates the not so obvious establishment, which will talk the rhetoric to take advantage of you. So when I saw the medical freedom movement in 2019, I was asked to deliver the key science lecture at the National Science Foundation. And at that lecture, I talked about, we need to move beyond vax and anti-vax and really talk about the need for personalized and precision medicine. And that's very different than creating the dialectic. And then I started looking at this fool and that's what he is, uh, Robert Kennedy, okay, he's a fool. And you may think I'm harsh, but you'll see shortly why. This fool, wherever he goes, he loses. He files lawsuits and he loses wherever he goes. And when I found out, let me go to the site here. When I found out, as I did research on this fellow, okay, that wherever he goes, he loses. But not only does he lose, okay, this guy also is worse than just losing. He's actually pro-vaccine. Let me repeat that again. How many of you know that Robert Kennedy is pro-vaccine? Let's take let's take the, the test to see how many people know he's pro-vaccine. How many people on there know that Robert Kennedy's pro-vaccine? And in fact, he believes that we need to have policies that encourage full vaccination of all Americans. How many people know that? Let's see, how many people know that? Okay. How many people know that Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the biggest misleader of our modern times, is not only pro-vaccine, he's emphatically pro-vaccine. And he believes that we need to vaccinate, we need policies to vaccinate everyone. Now, I found th this about him. A lot of wealthy, white, liberal women were giving him a lot of money. And I found this out. Then I found out that he'd endorsed Hillary Clinton not once, not twice, but three times. Okay? In fact, he endorsed her in 2016 when she said she, she wants to make sure everyone's there's vaccine mandates. Then in 2020, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. came to Massachusetts and did a fundraiser for his nephew, who's also pro-vaccine mandates, doofus Joe Kennedy Jr. Okay? Then more recently, just in December of this year, he had a big party at his home and he and he invited everyone to his home, but they had to be vaccinated or they had to get the test. Then he blamed his wife. Well, all of his Hollywood friends there in Malibu are all vaccinated and they believe in the jab. So he plays this game. So, you know, Ken Fielding over here did a great little flyer and it's called The Real RFK Jr. And by the way, Kennedy started calling out Fauci uh, nearly a year later after I did. He was watching which way the wind blows. So this this very nice thing, and I'll put it up here. Everyone can see it. Thank you, Ken. T Ken did the design artistry here. And you can see what it says, a real RFK Jr., okay? And it says, a real RFK Jr., scumbag misleader who endorsed vaccine Queen Hillary Clinton three times and wants policies for full vaccination of all Americans. So let's go to the actual, so let's go to uh, his statement by actual, um, what he actually said, okay? Let's go right to it. Uh, let me share my screen here. And let's go right here, okay? So when I expose this, it was hard for people, to, but this is in his own words. I want to say I it emphatically, I am pro-vaccine. I've been fiercely pro-vaccine. I believe that we ought to have policy that encourage full vaccination for all Americans. Okay, so let me play the video. Minister Farrakhan has asked me to address the issue of vaccines and African-American and vaccine safety. I want to start out by saying this, and I want to say it emphatically. I am pro-vaccine. I am. I have always been fiercely pro-vaccine. I had all six of my children vaccinated, and I believe that we ought to have policies that encourage full vaccination for all Americans. 
want to say it emphatically. I am pro-vaccine. I am. I have always been fiercely pro-vaccine. I had all six of my children vaccinated, and I believe that we ought to have policies that encourage full vaccination for all Americans. All right. So that's the first thing. So what was your name, Kylo? So Kylo, I I know this is hard, but you got to stop being an unconscious incompetent. And we're educating here tonight. Let me also show back on this website and I encourage people to go to rfkexposed.com. And I had to do the dirty job of exposing this fool. He endorsed Hillary Clinton, not once, three times. He said Hillary Clinton was not a big pharma, did not get contributions from big pharma. Well, she got the most big pharma contributions in 2016. Okay. And Hillary Clinton clearly said the science is clear. The earth is round, the sky is blue and vaccines work. Let's all protect our kids. So Robert Kennedy just, just didn't vote for her. He endorsed her, everyone. He endorsed her three times, okay? Not once, not twice, not three times. And he endorsed Hillary Clinton knowing her foundation, the Clinton Global Initiative, had a major partnership with Merck for the distribution of the Gardasil HPV vaccine. And Robert Kennedy featured in the Vax2 movie speaking out against the HPV vaccine. Still, he endorsed Clinton Kane knowing that Kane mandated HPV vaccines for high school girls, okay? So Robert F. Kennedy publicly endorsed Hillary Clinton 2000, 2007, 2008, sorry, four times, 2016, okay? So I want people to get their head out of their ass, okay? And it's it may be a long journey for some people, and you may never be able to get it out, but the reality is you have to get it out if we want to build a movement. And if you, so, so in this wonderful, uh, yeah, so here's a very foolish person saying he's pro-vaccine, but he's not pro-COVID vax. Okay, so why don't you keep following him, Nicole? So let me read some more stuff about him. And you you can, I, I don't know what your problem is, but um, Robbie refuses to attend rallies unless flown first class. Okay, we went to New Jersey in my little SUV with our own speakers, and we got people, 5,000 people to militantly protest, and we stopped it. He came with, with 10 SUVs. The problem is a lot of rich, wealthy white women want to sleep with Robert Kennedy, okay? And they think the Kennedys are going to, you know, be nice to you. Yeah, like they did in Chappaquiddick, right? That's how nice they are. Okay, so, I think we found one of them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Robert Kennedy's no fool, nor does he lose his court case. He accomplished a lot of good things for many people. He stands with the people at the rallies and speaks truth. Yeah, what has he done? Show me one thing he's done. He endorsed Hillary Clinton three times. Bring that person up again. Bring this foolish person up again. All right, I think I, I okay. Think that's well, well, that foolish person, can you explain to me why you endorsed Hillary Clinton three times when she's vaccine queen? So Robert Kennedy refuses to attend rallies. You got to play in first class. Okay. I'm a bottoms up guy. Okay. We drove our own cars. That's what the Kennedys are. You want to support celebrities and you want to, I don't know, whatever you want to do with them. Okay. Now, he also flew on Jeffrey Jeffrey uh, Epstein's plane. Epstein was a child trafficker, pedophile, and abuser. And as, as Ken discovered, everyone, and this is by Michael Ryder, the former Palm, Palm Beach police chief. He said, everyone who knew Ep Epstein knew exactly what he was about. He was constantly surrounded by underage girls despite having no daughters or nieces. Okay, so stop excusing these guys. Third, so R for Robbie refuses to attend rallies without paying. F, he flew on Epstein's plane. K, he kills authentic bottoms up movements to mislead people back in the arms of the establishment. And you people who want to give the children's whatever that bullshit fund that they have money, keep doing that. There will be no bottoms up movement. E, he emphatically is pro vaccine, wants policies encouraging full vaccination of all of Americans. N, he's a not so obvious establishment. He exists to distract people. He always tells people to go in front of city halls and then he wants to negotiate deals because he wants to be in control, backroom deals. That's not a movement. Then next N in Kennedy, non-vaccinated friends not allowed to attend dinner party at his own home as recent as December, 2021. So Nicole, can you explain that? And then he blames his wife. Kennedys are really good at blaming women, okay? For all their problems. E, he endorsed Hillary vaccine queen Clinton three times as well as his own nephew, pro-vax mandate, Joe Kennedy, for Senate. That was in 2020, okay? What was occurring in 2020? COVID, wasn't it? Okay, so wake up, Nicole. D, he delivered zero wins for medical freedom movement. Why do, why do you give him money? 
I will debate him. He's afraid of me, Gary. Why don't you all tell him to debate me? The motherfucker won't debate me. Okay? He's a Kennedy, right? We don't go down to darkies to debate them. That's his view. He's got a billion-dollar trust. Why do the Kennedys, who still make money off every cha-ching, 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 scotch that come to this country, why are they begging you for money? And why? Years of he and his family destroying medical freedom. It was the 1962 John F. Kennedy Vaccination Act. It was in 1986 Ted Kennedy saved Big Pharma from being sued for vaccine injuries. And it was during 2000 and 2016 RFK Jr. endorsed vaccine queen Hillary Clinton. And by the way, when I brought this up, he put up defamatory comments. We have a lawsuit. He said that I was a vaccine manufacturer. He said I work with Bill Gates because we get a 10% discount on software. And then he said, I work with the Clintons. Complete bullshit. So if those of you do not understand that the head doesn't change that much from the tail, the Kennedy's head and their tail are all one. Okay. So if you still want to follow them, please get out of the way of our movement and go suck Kennedy, whatever you want to do. I like Dr. Shiva, but constantly berating people who are trying to learn is not the answer. Well, Tommy, are you okay with... Uh, a fool who uh, lies to people, I will berate them. And if you don't want to berate them, then then that's fine. But it's my job because no one else wanted to expose this fool, okay? That's what he is. He writes a book called The Real Anthony Fauci, taking most of it from our lawsuit. And you're concerned that I'm berating him? That is how you learn. You need to expose the wheat from the chaff. OK, but if you want to jump out of a building, knowing that that there, maybe you don't know there's gravity, we're trying to teach people principles. The not so obvious establishment is a principle. Robert Kennedy Jr. is an example of the not so obvious establishment. It's not about him. It's about a principle. The word is getting about RFK. Did you see the holiday party antics? RFK, why? Yes, that's what we said. Exactly. Not now. That's what Ken is. By the way, Ken did this beautiful flyer. R.F. Kennedy, what it actually spells. OK, perfect. Exactly. Non-vaccinated friends not allowed to attend dinner party. So everyone out there. So he did a lockdown on his own house, didn't he? Lockdown in his own house. And then after it came out, I'm sure him and his wife discussed about it. Look, I still live out there. I left that world. But whenever you have a Hollywood party there, everyone is very clear what goes out in their invitations. You're telling me he he blames his wife, whatever her name, Heinz that he had people on the issue of vaccines that his wife put out there, everyone had to be vaccinated or had to have the test and he didn't know, bullshit. And if those of you are willing to do that kind of stuff and want to follow and want to, uh, uh, want to uh, you know, allay people of these kinds of contradictions, you have a serious problem. You're probably someone who likes to be abused. You're probably someone, you know, th these are situations where Someone will say, well, he's so nice to me. He gave me flowers, but he beat the hell out of me, but he did give me flowers once in a while, okay? That's what you're talking about. You have to unravel your brain from an abusive mentality. But thank you, not now. What about Robert Malone? Do you trust him? Look, Keynes, in 2019, I gave the lecture at the National Science Foundation calling out this vaccine one size fits all. In 2020, we called out Fauci. Does anyone want to tell me where Robert Malone was then? Now he's talking about, well, I'm the creator of the mRNA vaccine. And now I'm doing it. Where was he then? And literally he copies stuff from our movement. So the issue, Keynes, that you're not understanding is that we want to build a movement. And a movement is based on leaders who say the right thing at the right time. Not when it's right after the fact. Not when the house is burning down and then the firemen come. That's who Robert Malone is. So this is not about berating people. This is about educating people to understand how are we going to build a movement? You know, this guy, Robert Malone, wants it both ways. He wants to be known as a guy who created mRNA and the guy who's going to save the world, right? Where was he in 2020? John, where was he? I, didn't, I never heard about him back then. Yeah, where was he in 2020, Keynes? He was nowhere. So anyway, the bottom line is we have truckers in Alaska who are being screwed. And the only movement right now in the world that can win John, can you take that comment away? The only movement that can win is you organizing with the scientific principles, but particularly understanding the scumbags like this fellow.
okay? And Trump, okay? Trump gave me a bunch of gifts recently, okay? Shiva, do protests really work? Angela, you're asking now a very, very good question. Wonderful question. There's two kinds of protests, okay? The protests which are done top down. If you look at the civil rights protests of the March on Washington, there was a true bottoms up movement bubbling all over the world in this country in the 1900s and in the 1960s against neocolonialism, against real racism. Those movements came bottoms up. The elites, in the case of the United States, found a guy called Martin Luther King. And guess who did that? Robert F. Kennedy, this, this fool's father, found those people and imposed a leader. And then they did the protest called the March on Washington. You follow the difference? Top down protests versus bottoms up. Truth, Freedom and Health is building bottoms up movements. So what the establishment is doing now is doing top down movements because they're so afraid of our movement because our movement is singularly telling people, working people unite, let go of the misleaders and the controlled opposition scumbags who talk one day, but do something exactly opposite. And these kind of leaders are designed for foolish people, okay? So if you're a fool and after hearing this, you still wanna follow this person, please stop following me, okay? It's not worth it. But if you are interested in truly having dignity for yourself, if you're truly interested in building a bottoms up movement, then for your own sake and for your children's sake, start understanding the physics of building a movement. Start communing with people who are not so revering celebrities, who are not into the Kennedys, because that's the mental slavery that many of these people have. They're already slaves. We need to break from that slavery. Poland, do you have any leaders in Poland? Listen, um, we did a, uh, uh, John, keep that person up. So whoever was up, um, you should go to Truth, Freedom and Health. We have a whole European team. I'm not sure, Bogulziks. Um, if you could sign up as a Truth, Freedom and Health warrior, we will connect you to our European team. We have warriors all over Europe, um, in Germany, in Czechoslovakia, in Serbia, but we want you to uh, connect up. Our movement is a global movement. And we want to go on one principle, working people unite beyond left and right, truth, freedom and health. But you have to learn the foundations of systems. If you don't understand the principles, just like you can't build an airplane, we're not going to be able to build a movement. But one of the fundamental things is we have to break from the not so obvious establishment. It's the only way forward. Did you already go over how we can help? Yes. Yeah, so the way you can help fidgets is you can help you. By step one, learning the science of systems, learning how we build movement. There's a physics. Step two, starting to interact with the community of other people. We've created an infrastructure. John, why don't you play the warrior video? That we, not, not the you know the whole features that we have. Yep. And step three, starting to learn how to be an activist. I'm going to just take a quick break, a water break. But we have created that infrastructure. My life journey over the last 40 years, 50 years has been to figure out how we build movements, bring in engineering science principles to do that. John, can you play that video? So John's going to play a video. I'm just going to take a quick five minute break, but I want everyone to listen to it. So we've created the education, we've created the technology, and we've created the activism. But it's only with you getting your Excalibur. There's not going to be any politician that's going to do this. And we have outsourced our lives to scumbags like this fellow and others. Just because you hear them saying shit against Fauci doesn't mean anything. Where were they in 2020? John, play the video, please. Hello, this is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Welcome to VA Shiva, the platform of education, technology, and activism, so you may raise your consciousness to win the truth, freedom, and health you need to create the future you deserve. The VA Shiva platform provides this truth, freedom, health warrior scholars the following three capabilities. Number one, an ultimate education that is based on the science of systems. Number two, technologies to empower you to take charge of your health, as well as social media tools, independent of big tech, so you can connect with other incredible truth, freedom, health warrior scholars equally 
truly dedicated like you to winning truth, freedom, and health. Three, instruments for activism so you become a beacon of light in your online and offline community to educate others, growth, and advancement. VA Shiva provides you the foundations of the science of systems, the ultimate education. The science of systems provides you the missing fundamental scientific knowledge to understand every system in and around you. The science of systems will enable you to uncover the real problem and real solution in any situation and on any issue. Concerning the educational component, first you will receive direct access to me to learn the science of systems in my three-hour live private online group class that I run every week. Second, you will have access to archived lectures so you can continue your education independent of me. Third, you can test your proficiency in learning the fundamental principles and get a formal certification for the foundations of systems. Independent of this classroom education, you will receive also four important books. The first book is the best-selling classic Systems and Revolution from which you can learn all of these concepts and more. The second book is The Science of Everything that will educate you on how the science of systems is the foundational knowledge of every system in the universe. The third book, Your Body, Your System, focuses on how to understand the interplay of these systems within your own body. And then the fourth book, Your System, Your Life, will help you apply these principles to other aspects of your life, such as running a business, understanding relationships, and more. Beyond the curriculum and books, the second capability is the technologies that you will be afforded. One of them is a powerful Your Body, Your System software, which is an online laboratory where you can use your body as a system to further deepen your understanding of the science of systems. The tool allows you to understand what kind of system you are. Is your system on course or is it off course? And how the inputs of food, supplements, herbs, activities such as sleep, yoga, meditation, exercise can affect your body to bring it back on course. Finally, to support your education, I've also included a seminal scientific paper that I wrote, which will help you understand that the knowledge of systems, it does not only originate in the modern world starting in the 1920s and 30s, but it actually dates back 10 to 20,000 years and intersects directly with the foundations of Eastern systems of medicine. In addition to this, you will also get two scientific papers sharing how the science of systems can also be used to apply to understanding how food is medicine. One paper exposes turmeric from the molecular systems level and how it affects your body. The other paper explores ginger and how that affects your body. That's just the educational piece. As you raise your consciousness through this education, you will likely want to connect with other Truth Freedom Health Warrior Scholars in an environment where you can connect and build community. To support that, I've also created two powerful social media tools. One of them is the VA Shiva Forum. Here you can start discussions, you can pose questions and meet others and have healthy debates. The other is VA Shiva Social, where you can create your own profile, your own presence, like other major social media tools. However, it is independent of big tech. You can use VA Shiva Social to interconnect with your fellow Truth Freedom Health Warrior Scholars and build community. Beyond the education capability and the social media capability, the platform also enables you to take action by disseminating your knowledge on the ground and into your local online and offline communities. Powerful educational cards and research are included so you can pass these cards to your friends and neighbors that provide them summarized content which further directs them to online research and education. In addition to this, the activism component also provides you many, many short one-minute educational video content, memes and text, allowing you to quickly craft messages for your Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and other pages so you can deliver content to educate others and drive them to longer educational posts on VA Shiva. VA Shiva is fundamentally an enabling platform for you to get the truth, freedom, and health you deserve through education, technology, and activism. I hope you become a truth, freedom, and health warrior scholar today. Thank you. All right, everyone. I hope this has been educational. Um, but, you know, it's interesting when um, you get down to the heart of this, what is going on in Alaska. That's where we started the conversation. We started talking about movement building and everything. But the video that you just shared, that we shared is, I think one of the things that's happened in the world, you know, when you look at someone who drives a truck, someone who is an electrician, someone who's an engineer, um, someone who has a certain set of skill, the educational system has devalued people with skills. And it's unfortunate. It's ha really happened over the last 30, 40 years. You know, to actually make something takes a lot of effort. To build something takes a lot of effort. To learn a skill is a tremendous amount of effort. And what's happened is every Tom, Dick, and Harry thinks they're an expert at everything these days, and they're not. Um, so that, uh, frankly that disrespect for knowledge, that disrespect for scientific understanding, that disrespect for hard work 
has really diminished a lot of people and you have a lot of unconscious incompetency and you saw that. So if someone named is Kennedy and it talks like this and who writes a book, he must be have some competence. Well, this guy is completely incompetent or someone's name is Trump or someone name is, you know, JP Morgan, etc. And this is the lack of dignity that's happened. So my personal journey, no one has ever given me anything. I've had to build everything on my own. Everything I have has come from actual hard work. And many of you, it's the same way. But there is a 0.001% of the people who are given everything. And there's a lot of codependent people who think those people are their saviors. And they don't want to look to their own kind, bottoms up, because they actually have a deep hatred for themselves. And that's what you witness here this evening with people who have an unconscious incompetent. Someone said, I see many people are addicted to their hopium drugs. Yes. They're addicted to people who, who they think they're going to be their saviors. The only savior is you. The simple, humble thing that I've been able to do and our movement is able to do is to provide people an infrastructure so you can become an agent of change for truth, freedom, and health. And those three words, truth, freedom, and health, are not just a slogan. They relate down to universal principles, freedom, movement of information, matter, and energy, without which you can't get to the conversion of information, matter, and energy, which is converting potential ideas to truth. That's what truth is. It's a verb. And when we have freedom and we have truth, we can build real infrastructure for our bodies and ourselves, structure and health. And with, and with health, we have the strength to fight for freedom and explore truth. But without that, we got nothing. But you have to learn in a disciplined way the physics of this. You can't be an electrician by just thinking you're going to go wire shit together. You can't build a movement without understanding the physics. What we have put together is the physics of how you build a movement. So please get off whatever hopium you're on. And if you're serious, go to Truth, Freedom and Health, learn the knowledge of how we build movements. This knowledge has not existed before. It's been my life's journey. There's a book there called System and Revolution on this side, okay? It took me 40 years to write that 100, 100 page book. We've created the material, but I've used all of the technology training I got to build an infrastructure independent of big tech so you can commune with people in an environment that you can start building community. And third is that our movement is not just in the head. It's not just about social hanging out. It's about you getting on the ground, going over your comfort zones and learning how to build a movement. And it's only then we're gonna have real change. But right now we're headed into slavery. And if you follow idiots like this after what I've told you, and then I'm sorry, you deserve what you get. It's unfortunate, but there's enough people. The majority is for truth, freedom, and health. The majority gets this. And the reason we do these videos is to make sure that we build this movement. Each one of you gets educated, become leaders, and active in your local uh, neighborhoods. But right now, what's happening in Alaska, um, your video is overwhelming. It is very intimidating. Which one? The yes. one we displayed? Yeah. No, I think I think he's talking about the whole thing. Um, oh. Yes, it is intimidating, isn't it? But you got to start simple. You know, the simple, the slogan, truth, freedom, and health is not an intimidating slogan, but there's a lot of depth to that slogan, okay? But it's time, if you're intimidated, you get over your fear and you get educated or be enslaved. We have the solution and it is you becoming a, a catalyst for change. So thank you, Vivian. Um, Made through True Hill, says, I drive a semi truck. I think it's important to stand with other workers and truck drivers. Exactly. We all need to stand together as working people. We're the ones who create what's around us. Okay. Robert Kennedy doesn't create anything. Donald Trump plays golf. Okay. The billionaires hang out. You know, they need working people, and working people must unite. Working people must unite. And we must go beyond left and right. And we must get educated. All right, everyone. It is, unless there's anything else, it's. Um, I don't see her number. Okay. I don't, I don't see it. 
So anyway, uh, we'll do a lane. You know, it's 10.55 p.m. Anyway, I hope this was valuable. Everyone, start thinking about solidarity. Solidarity with working people, not solidarity with the, you know, with the not so obvious establishment. And there's no kumbaya here. We're not trying to build some quote unquote coalition, which will be all a bunch of messy um, nonsense. We're trying to build a very, very tight, sharpened movement. That's how we win. Thank you, everyone. Be well, be the light. Good night.